A very good day to you and welcome to Shalom. We are standing underneath these old pine trees that my late dad actually planted, can you believe it, over 30 years ago. My, how time flies. My dear friend, today I want to speak to you about the identity of Jesus. Who do people say that Jesus is? Just recently I was confronted by a group of people that say Jesus is not divine. Jesus was a good man and the Holy Spirit came upon him. Then he started to perform miracles. Let's go to the Word of God like we always do on this program and let's see what the Bible says about the identity of Jesus. I hope you've got that nice hot cup of coffee, that cup of tea, relax, put your feet up and just listen to the Word of God for the next 20 minutes. If we go to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and from verse 1. I'm reading from the New King James Version. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2. He was in the beginning with God. See, it doesn't say it, it says he. Verse 3, all things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Who is the word? Jesus is the Word. My dear friend, this is so important for you to understand in these last days in which we live, where it looks like the devil is hell-bent on breaking down the name of Jesus, because he knows if he does that, he has the victory. If you go to the back of your Bible, to 1 John, 1 John chapter 1, we're going to read again what uh, John says under the unction of the Holy Spirit. 1 John, I'm nearly there. It's Peter, second epistle of Peter, and then we go straight into John. And you'll see there is no doubt at all about who Jesus is. There we go. 1 John, chapter 1, verse 1. That which was from the beginning, right? This is John speaking. Which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. Folks, John is speaking about Jesus. John walked with Jesus. John ate with Jesus. John lived with the Son of God for three years. Who do men say that he is? I want to submit to you today that Jesus Christ is God made flesh. You say, how can you say that, Angus? Well, if you go to Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23, it talks about Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. The angel Gabriel talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. Folks, it is so simple. It is so straightforward. I don't know how people can mistake Jesus for anybody else. He is the Son of God. He is the Word. I've always said to people, if you want to speak to somebody about the authenticity of Jesus, give them a Bible. Because Jesus is the Word. See, So if you want to introduce somebody to Jesus, give him the Word of God, and he will meet Jesus for himself and instruct him how to read it. He is the Word. Jesus was crucified. Why? I'll tell you why he was crucified. Because he told the Jews that he was the Messiah. He was the anointed one. He was the soon coming king. That is why they killed him. For no other reason. They didn't kill him because he was an adulterer. Because he was a thief. Because he was a blasphemer. No. They killed him because he said, I am am. See? And that's what God calls himself. I am. 
when Moses was told by God in the desert to go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let God's people go, Moses said, who should I say that sent me? He said, say, I am has sent you. And Jesus said the same thing. I want to tell you, my dear friend, it is so important, this program, that you understand who Jesus Christ is. You see, I'm a Christian. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm not a follower of a good man who became like Jesus. I'm following Jesus. You see, we as Christians, we believe in the Holy Trinity. What does that mean, Angus? It means the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three or one. You say it's very difficult to understand. It might be, but that is the fact of the matter. I have met all three. Jesus Christ is my best friend. My Heavenly Father is in control of all creation. And one of these days I'm going to meet Him face to face. And the Holy Spirit is my helper. I met Him in 2012 at Engedi, at the Dead Sea, the lowest point on earth, when I'd read Acts chapter 2 about the account of the disciples being baptized by the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues. It says like a mighty rushing wind came through the upper room. I have been to the upper room many times. I want to tell you that night I will never forget. Some of you watching this program were probably there. There was over 5,000 delegates from every nation on earth. And when we had finished reading Acts chapter 2, I closed my Bible and I walked around to the lectern to the front and I said, Lord Jesus, please do it again. And the Holy Spirit came and He visited all of us. My dear friend, the wind does not often blow on the lowest point on earth and it hardly ever rains. As I said, Lord, please do it again, they came running to the front. I'm talking about lots of people. Some of these ladies had their evening dresses on. They were in Israel. They were in Jesus' country. And they were lying in the dust. Some kneeling, some laughing, some crying. I did nothing. I didn't have a chance to. The side screens were being ripped by the wind. All the equipment was getting blown off the platform. This Bible, which weighs over two pounds, was blown away like a piece of tissue paper. My assistant had to go and find it. The Israelis, the Orthodox Jews, who are not believers, were telling me to tell the people to go back because the structure was going to collapse. God, through the power of His Holy Spirit, visited us that night. No one will ever convince me otherwise. Jesus, He is the great farmer. He's the shepherd of the sheep. He's the friend of sinners. He's the lily of the valley. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Folks, He's been a friend to me for over 40 years on this very farm. I, I, I can almost smell Him. I can almost touch Him, just like John said. He's been so close to me. And some of the deepest, darkest hours of my life, when I've been through personal tragedy, when my little nephew fell off the tractor that I was driving, and, and, and I ran over and crushed his body, and he died right there on the road, Jesus was with me. If Jesus wasn't with me, I would have died. Probably committed suicide. Probably shot myself. Or maybe became a drug addict or an alcoholic. Jesus is more real to me than you sitting in that chair, sir. And I really want to go so far as to say, how dare you? How dare you lower the divinity of God? Emmanuel, God with us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus is the Word. He was crucified because He told the Jews that He was the Messiah. And I, I want to tell you today that Jesus Christ is coming back, but this time not for the first time. He's coming back a second time. And folks, when He comes back this time, He's not coming riding on a, on a donkey. He's coming riding on a war horse on a white charger, and He is going to take us home to be with Him in heaven. But He requires one thing of you, and He requires one thing of me. What is that, Angus? To believe that He's the Son of God. 
You need to believe that he, Jesus is the Son of God. You've got to be absolutely sure. And I'm, I don't often do this on this program, but at the end of this program, I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer with you so that you can be sure. You see, if you look at Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, it says, if you, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ and you believe in your heart that He's been raised from the dead, you shall be saved. You see, my dear friend, a mortal man cannot be raised from the dead. Jesus alone called Lazarus out of the grave. It was Jesus. There was a young black maiden on this very farm that was struck by lightning and all her friends told me she was dead. See? And I went into that, that hut and I laid my hands upon her and I said, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, be healed. And she was raised up. We have many witnesses. That lady is still alive today. She lives in a Zulu village not far from here. She's married with children. That was a miracle. Had nothing to do with me or anybody else. It was the name of Jesus that raised her from the dead. We need to get back to basics. We need to understand that if you cannot accept the fact that Jesus is divine, that Jesus is God made flesh, then you are nothing less than an unbeliever like any other unbeliever. How can a man who was crucified, raised from the dead three days later, be found walking on the road to Emmaus and walking between two men and speaking to them? And when they said, please come and spend the night with us, he sat there and he ate food with them and then he disappeared. <laughs> he is Jesus. How can a man, a mere mortal man, if, you, if that's what you say Jesus is, how can he, when the disciples are huddled in the upper room, all of a sudden stand in front of them? He never knocked on the door. He didn't open the door. He just appeared. You see, you need to ask yourself these serious questions. Because the biggest sin in the Bible is the sin of unbelief. And I tell you what, the devil is doing everything he can at the moment to disprove the divinity of God. And that's where the actual battle is. And I want to say to any preachers listening to this program, we need to stop talking about all the other stuff and we need to get down to basics. We need to tell the people who the Good Shepherd is. His name is Jesus. And the Bible says, and his sheep will hear his voice when he calls them. I want to say to you now that uh, a natural man cannot walk on water. I don't care whatever man comes to me and says, I've walked on water. He's a liar. And the truth is not in him. He is an apostate. In the old days, he would be burnt at the stake for telling lies. There's only one man that's ever walked on water. And his name is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. One of my favorite places in Israel is to sit at Peter's Landing. It's a place called Tabga, where Jesus took two sardines and five barley loaves and he fed 5,000 men. He broke it in pieces. But to me, a greater miracle than that is when you sit on the shores of Lake Galilee and you think, you just think of Jesus, a man, I don't know what he weighed. Maybe he weighed 80 kilos, 90 kilos. A big, strong, powerful man walking on water, folks. Not just a couple of paces from one side of the lake right across to the other. Only God can walk on water. And God's name is Jesus. He is God made flesh. One of my other favorite places to go to when I'm in Israel is Mount Tabor, the Mount of Transfiguration. To think that Jesus took Peter, James, and John right to the top of this mountain. I want to tell you, it's a very steep mountain. It's got a windy road that goes all the way to the top. Only motor cars can go on that road. It's too narrow, narrow for buses. It is very high, and it sticks out like a store thumb. And you can look right over the plains of Megiddo from that place. Jesus went to the top of that mountain and there he met with his father and he spoke to his father and Peter, James and John must have watched it like it was a big screen. They were in awe and on the one side was Moses 
And on the other side was Elijah, the prophet. And Father God was in the middle. And they spoke with Jesus. And it says Jesus was transformed into, 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 into absolute beauty, into a white form. Afterwards, Peter, James, and John were so overwhelmed by what happened, they said to Jesus, let's just, let's just build a little, a little tabernacle here. We can stay here. And Jesus said, no, we've got to go back. When Jesus told John the Baptist to baptize him in the water, and John the Baptist said, I'm not even fit to tie your sandals. He said, do it. When Jesus was baptized in the water, he came out of the water, folks, and a dove, a pigeon, a dove, a white dove came and settled on his shoulder. The dove, by the way, is the symbol of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And a voice came out of heaven and said, This is my son, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. How can you tell me that Jesus was a mortal man? Impossible. Jesus wasn't infused by the Holy Spirit. Jesus is God. That's why when Mary, go to Nazareth. I've been to Nazareth, I've been to that cave where the angel Gabriel came and visited Mary and said, you're going to be the most blessed woman of any woman that's ever lived because you're going to nurse God in your womb for nine months and he's going to be born. And when he is born, you will look after him for 30 years until his ministry starts. That's not a mortal man. That woman had never slept with a man. It is impossible for a woman to conceive of a, of, a, of a baby without having intercourse with a man. It's impossible. Ask any gynecologist. And you stand there, you sit there, sir, and you tell me that Jesus Christ was a good man and God came to live in him? Never. Jesus is a miracle. Jesus is God coming down from heaven to earth. To show you and me how to live this life, which is tough. You tell me that a mortal man can come into a strange village, a Samaritan village, and sit by the well and talk to a complete stranger who has never ever seen him before. And he sat there and he asked that woman to give him water. And then he proceeded to tell her his her whole life story from the time that she was born on this earth. It amazed her so much that she ran into the village and she said, I've met a man that's told me everything about myself and I've never seen him before. Surely he is the son of God. Do you know that the whole village was converted that very day? Jesus. Jesus, the miracle worker. You see, my dear friend, if you don't have faith that Jesus Christ is divine, you cannot receive healing. You cannot receive deliverance. And most of all, you cannot receive eternal life. Because when you get to heaven, Jesus will be there. And I want to tell you, He will be our defense attorney. And the judge will be our heavenly father. And the devil will be there as the accuser, as the prosecutor. And father is going to ask his son one question. Do you know this man? Do you know this woman? And according to that answer, will determine whether we will live in heaven or not. Because if Jesus says, I know that man, Father, Father will say, let him in to the kingdom. Folks, the woman with the issue of blood, she had spent all her money. She had nothing left. She had been bleeding internally for 12 years. She didn't know what to do. So she said, if I can touch the garment of Jesus, the healer, the Son of God. I will be healed. She pushed through the crowd. She touched his garment. She was healed immediately, the Bible says, and that blood just dried up. And Jesus turned around and said, Who touched me? And the disciples said, Lord, there's people pushing in from every side. But you see, Jesus knew because virtue had gone from him. And the woman said, It was me, Lord. He said, Woman, go in peace. Your faith has made you well. Bartimaeus, the blind man, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Call him to me. What do you want me to do for you, Bartimaeus? Lord, that I might receive my sight. He said, be healed. Instantly his eyes were opened and he could see. Why? Because 
He believed. What about Jairus' daughter? Exactly the same. What about the centurion? Exactly the same. I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is supernatural. Jesus Christ does not come from this world. He told them, I'm a sojourner. I'm a traveler. This is not my home. My home is in heaven. I've come from heaven to set the people free. And then I'm going back to be with my father. I have stood on the top of the Mount of Olives. And I've seen the place where they remember where Jesus lifted off from earth and went back to his father in heaven. What mortal man can do that? No mortal man. My dear friend watching this program, I want to tell you now, I believe God has given you one more chance to get back to Jesus. And the only way you'll do that is by reading this book. There are 66 books in this Bible and every single book talks about Jesus from Genesis through to Revelation. I want to pray a sinner's prayer with you. You say, Angus, I gave my life to the Lord 20 years ago or whatever. But you don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. No, 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 no. I believe that Jesus is, um, is, uh, is, is, an, is an amazing person. But he's just a man like you and me. Wrong, sir. I will take you myself to Israel. I will take you to the tomb. The tomb is empty. There is no body there. There are no bones. There is no mummy there because he's not there. He has been raised from the dead because he is God. So I want us to pray. And I want, I want you to pray very sincerely with me because this might be the most important prayer that you will ever pray in your entire life. I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to ask you to pray this simple prayer after me. Are you ready? Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you through the word of God to be God made flesh. I acknowledge you as Emmanuel. I acknowledge you the same way as Peter acknowledged you. You are the Christ. You are the divine and the anointed one. And Lord, I ask you to take away my sins today. The greatest one of all, Lord, that I've even been questioning your divinity. Master, I pray today that you'd open my spiritual eyes, that I would be able to anticipate, to feel, to expect, and to have communion with you. I thank you, Lord, by faith and through the power of your Holy Spirit that I will see you face to face in a very short time. And then I will meet my Heavenly Father and we will dwell together in eternity forever. I ask these things in your precious name. Amen. May God bless you until the next time. Goodbye.